Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. In this episode, the big fishy returns, we get a look at some more Denisovan material, and people still love Spinosaurs. Well, first up in the Paleo News this week is a paper that has looked at a very strange tooth from the infamous giant shark Megalodon. This particular tooth looks like it has been split down the middle, resulting in what's known as a double tooth pathology. Comparing this specimen to similar cases in the modern bull shark, the researchers managed to determine that it had been caused by an injury while feeding, and was not a developmental artifact. Such pathologies are frequently seen in mammals, but are less well understood in sharks, with it seeming that perhaps the prey items targeted by Megalodon were actually more diverse than previously realised as bull sharks, which also display such tooth injuries, feed on animals recorded to cause such traumas, such as rays, sawfish, spiny fish, and sea urchins. So, the researchers suggest, perhaps Megalodon also sometimes fed on similar prey, in addition to marine mammals. Also in the news is a paper published in Nature Communications documenting the discovery of more Denisovan material, which is always exciting. A single molar has been found in a limestone cave in the Annamite Mountains in Laos, dating from the Middle Pleistocene between 164 to 131,000 years ago. By looking at the internal structure of the tooth, the researchers were able to determine that it probably came from a young female individual, and morphological similarities with other Denisovan specimens show that it is most probably from one of these humans too, further showing how this area of Southeast Asia was a hotspot of homo diversity at this time in the Pleistocene. And finally for this week, there's also been some more Spinosaur news, with a fragmentary maxilla from the early Cretaceous of Spain being reported on. This bone had previously been assigned to Baryonyx, but this new study finds that it's more likely from an indeterminate Baryonychine that's closer to Baryonyx than Suchomimus. The paper also helps to clarify some of the anatomy of Spinosaurid skulls, with comparisons between this fossil and others helping to better refine some of the characters unique to this grouping. Anyway, that's it from me for this week. I hope you enjoyed finding out what's been going on in the world of paleontology. Thanks for watching.